Oh, it's so good to be 4-0 on a defending champion season. Hey guys, Code 3, Week 4 Review. Welcome. And yeah, I'm 4-0, and I took down Mark's Mangina, Frank Marchione, this week. Frank got uh, Frank got a terrible game from Dak Prescott. Negative points from Mecole Hardman. Uh, did get a decent game from his running backs. Uh, you know, his running backs are, are going to carry the load here with Zeke Elliott, Josh Jacobs, and Austin Eckler. But with Melvin Gordon coming back, I wonder how much value Austin Eckler really has. Um, be interesting to see what happens going forward for him. But for me, losing, uh, losing Ben Roethlisberger early in the season hasn't seemed to stop me. Uh, I got... A great performance out of Jamie Miss Winston on my bench. And a good performance out of Jacoby Brissett in my lineup. Uh, three touchdowns, 265, and a pick. Juju, disappointing, fi only 15 yards. Uh, Chris Godwin carried the load in the wide receivers for me, uh, 172 and two touchdowns. Derrick Henry and Chris Thompson were okay at the running backs. Uh, Travis Kelsey has been has been serviceable at my tight end, though hasn't had that... Well, he, had, he did have a breakout game in Week 2, but has just been about eight and a half to nine points every game otherwise. I do lose John Ross for the for basically this the season. I've already dropped him, so it'll be interesting to see what I do going forward. Uh, and the kicker in defense, I put up nine, uh, 29 points, where Frank only put up 20. Frank falls to one and three. Uh, you know, for talking as much shit as you did, Frank, uh, you're not really coming to, uh, coming to play every week, and you're going to need to step it up, buddy. I'm 4-0 here. Guys... Look out, it could be back-to-back -back titles for me. Moving on, uh, close matchup this week between Matthew Trousdale and Anthony uh, Anthony Millard. I had a moment there. Uh, Matthew gets the win here by about six points, 115 to 109. Uh, Matthew did play the, uh, the backup for, or the replacement for Ben Roethlisberger, Mason Rudolph. Got about 20 points out of him. Solid game. Jarvis Landry put up 21. James Conner put up 18. Pittsburgh's defense put up 19 for him. I remember he was he was he was down quite a bit before the uh, before the the Monday night game. And James Conner, uh, Pittsburgh's defense, and Mason Rudolph really stormed back and got the win for him. Uh, for Anthony. Chris Carson gave him a good game. Jared Goff gave him, you know, 500 plus passing yards. And Dalvin Cook gave him 13. Kenny Galladay put up 18 plus. But the rest of the lineup really disappointed. You know, only three, almost less than four from Marlon Mack. Only half a point from Greg Olson. You know, a little more than three points from Calvin Ridley. You know, with Matt Stafford on the bench, you know, got, getting outscored by Jared Goff, that doesn't hurt at all. But the position players on this team really let him down. Uh, both of these guys go two and two in the first month. So we'll see where they go going forward. Low scoring matchup of the week goes to Chris Chapman, who goes three and one in the first month, uh, defeating Golden Taint Sergio Landa, who's now two and two. Uh, both these guys had a disappointing week, you know, up and down the lineup. Wayne Gallman was the highest scorer in bo on both sides of the. Uh, on both sides of this matchup with 21.8 as a replacement for Saquon Barkley. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Barkley's going to come back this week because there there's talks that he hasn't been ruled out. Uh, Chris, for whatever reason, is still hanging on to Rob Gronkowski and Antonio Brown, uh, who are not currently football players. Um, this is like me having myself on my fantasy team. I'm not going to get any production and I don't know that uh, you're going to see either of these guys in the NFL this season. But maybe Chris knows something we don't. Um, for whatever reason, those guys are rostered for him. 14, uh, almost 15 points out of LaShawn McCoy. The rest of the the rest of the team was pretty disappointing. Vernon Davis only half a point. Philip Dorsett less than two, uh, and a disappointing performance from Amari Cooper, who only had 48 yards. On the other side for for Sergio. Man, Josh Allen got beat up and beat down this week by the New England defense. Only three and a half points. Uh, on, his, on his bench, Baker Mayfield put up 19 and a half. That would have been the difference there. Uh, the only guys to score in double digits for Sergio this week, uh, Daryl uh, Williams, Aaron Jones, Stephon Diggs. Everybody else scored nine or less, and the Green Bay defense scored negative one. You know these guys, and and the thing is, it's interesting that Saquon Barkley is you know on Sergio's team and goes down, and Chris beats him with his backup. 
in Wayne Gallman. So that's something that's something to sort of stick a feather in your cap for, Chris. Good win this week, three and oh, three and one overall. Uh, we move on. Uh, beat down of the week goes to Corey Stearns, who's now three and one, beating up on Mark Wilton. Uh, Corey got a great performance out of Nick Chubb, 41 plus points, 165 yards and three touchdowns. Devonte Adams put up 23 points from 180 yards and Devonte Freeman gave him 10 points. Finally, a decent performance from him. Uh, he does lose Steven Gostowski, the kicker. He's going to be done for the year with a hip in with a hip injury. Uh, so they're gonna they're gonna be working out kickers this week. For Mark, uh, good performance from Christian McCaffrey. Good performance from Cortland Sutton. Decent performance from Matt Prater. Everybody else sucked. Uh, half a point from Adam Thielen. Deshaun Watson got beat up. Uh, Baltimore's defense gave up a ton of fucking yards to 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 Nick Chubb on Corey's team, uh, and everybody else was just sort of mediocre. Uh, having Lamar Jackson on the bench who scored almost 25, that would have been helpful. Still wouldn't have made the difference though. And Jordan Howard scored 30 points on, on Corey's bench. So any running backs he played this week would have been amazing. Uh, AJ Brown on his bench from Tennessee put up 94 and two touchdowns. That would have certainly been helpful rather than say Marquise Brown, who did next to nothing for Baltimore. Again, Corey's 3-1, and one, and he said that he's not going to have any distractions this year, and he's certainly proving that in putting together a strong squad here. Uh, we'll see how he does going forward as the next month begins. We move on to the next matchup here. That was uh, That's that's a, finally a win for Dunn studying Gabe Porras, who gives Hal Wyrick his fourth loss of the season. And Hal's in some deep shit right here because... You know, he took Patrick Mahomes first overall, and the re- and and other than Todd Gurley and Frank Gore, he's had a really really disappointing team this year. Uh, you know, Mahomes puts up 20 points this week, but he's just not going to get it done. He loses by nine points this week. Gurley puts up 19. Gore puts up almost 16. His kicker, who is gay, puts up uh, puts up 14. But his wide receivers are an absolute mess. Edelman only puts up three. You know, Kirk four and a half, Chark four and a half, Marvin Jones seven and a half. You know, he he need. If it's me, I think he needs to make a move for a wide receiver. Uh, maybe buy low on a guy like Juju Smith Schuster or someone else in that realm, because at the end of the day, he's not going to get. He, if he loses another game, his season's about over. Uh, it's really difficult to dig out of an zero and four start. Um, I, I believe, you know, as long as he's got Patrick Mahomes, he has the ability to do it. But, you know, when you're running into teams like this where, where you know, Phillip Rivers puts up 26, David Johnson 13, Austin Hooper puts up 18, 16 out of Seattle's defense, almost 10 out of Sterling Shepard, you know, those are the types of performances that are going to get it done. And here's the thing. If he had played Emmanuel Sanders or Corey Davis – those guys would have put up 30 total for, for for Gabe, and this wouldn't have even been as close as it was. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Hal does going forward. It's pretty disappointing he starts out 0-4 as a former champion, but we'll see what happens. Finally, the final matchup this week, 3-1 and one, uh, James McCloskey, the Fantasy Browns, uh, defeats the now 1-3 McKinney's who got Melvined again this week. Uh, they did have a great performance from Aaron Rodgers, but that's about it. Uh, Greg Zerline gave him 13, but again, that's about all they get. You know, putting out less than less than 80 points. Their entire uh, bench does not score a single point. You know, they've still got Melvin Gordon down there, and either, I guess they're waiting for him to show back up. But for James, it was a great week. You know, Matt Ryan did not have a great game, but the rest of the roster really stepped up. Leonard Fournette finally showed what he's capable of with 225 and 29 total points. Uh, Cooper Cup did put up 22 and change, and Mike Evans gave him four, um, almost 15 points. Uh, just a solid performance from James, a 3-1 and one start for this guy. And if we look at the, uh, at the, the rankings here, uh, the, the Charlie division is led by the undefeated this guy, Kissing Cousins. And James McCloskey's Fantasy Browns are right on my heels uh, at 3-1. and one. The Delta division is led by Corey Stearns, uh, but followed very, very closely by Plaxidental shooting Chris Chapman. And the Bravo division is looking rather weak here. Uh, the Syphilitic Franks, 
Mark Wilton does lead the way at two and two, but Golden Taint, uh, Sergio Land is right behind him. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens this week, guys. Best of luck to you. We've got a bunch of big matchups here, and you know, hopefully, hopefully the uh, winless. Straight out of Coughlin, Hal Wyrick can get his first win or else we're going to start looking for a winless season. Best of luck, guys. I'll see you soon.